White Dwarfs, Neutron Stars, and Black Holes by Rachel Williams and Mason Gaspard. A white dwarf is the burned out core of an intermediate mass star. After hydrogen fusion has ended, all that is left behind is a hot, dense, and dim carbon oxygen core. It is predicted that a white dwarf will eventually turn into a large crystal if it is left to cool over the course of billions of years. This is the eventual fate of our sun. In our neighborhood of space, white dwarfs represent around 8% of solar bodies. White dwarfs are quite small and dim compared to the early years as main sequence stars, usually having a diameter similar to Earth's. However, temperatures in white dwarfs can exceed 100,000 Kelvin. White dwarfs are extremely dense. One teaspoon-sized piece of matter brought back to Earth would weigh five tons. A thin layer of hydrogen and helium surrounds a white dwarf, somewhat like an atmosphere. Interesting things happen to white dwarfs if they are in a binary system. The white dwarf is fueled by its companion's hydrogen. When enough hydrogen is dumped onto the white dwarf and its temperature reaches 10 to the 7th Kelvin, hydrogen fusion starts again and an explosion occurs. This explosion is called a nova. A more extreme type of explosion is called a type 1a supernova, and it can occur if a few key conditions are met. The chandra sekar limit represents the point at which a white dwarf cannot exert enough outward pressure to combat its own gravity. If a white dwarf is already near its chandra sekar limit and its companion in a binary system dumps hydrogen onto it, a supernova explosion will occur. If this explosion is extreme enough, a neutron star is formed. Neutron stars are made when remnants of large mass stars explode as supernovae. Their expanding cores are stopped by their outer layers and compressed into highly dense clumps of neutrons. Neutron degeneracy pressure, which is similar to but stronger than electron degeneracy pressure, explains the creation of these neutron dense cores. Extreme pressure causes protons and electrons to be forced together, forming neutrons. Neutron stars are even more dense than white dwarfs, around 200 million times denser to be exact. One teaspoon sized piece of matter from a neutron star would weigh one billion tons on Earth. Due to the intense amount of matter being compacted into a small place, Magnetic fields and angular momentum are also very strong. The structure of a neutron star can be broken down into three pieces. A surface crust contains solid nuclei and electrons. Next is a layer of superfluid neutrons, meaning they can move like a liquid but without any friction. And finally, a core of superfluid neutrons and superconductive protons. Superconductive means that electric currents can move through the clumps of protons without losing any energy. Because of the intense angular momentum and magnetic fields of a neutron star, the rotation velocity can be very fast and strong electrical currents are made. These currents charge the electrons and protons on the surface and beam them out as radiation at the north and south poles. This quickly rotating neutron star that emits pulses of radiation is called a pulsar. Pulsars have been documented with full rotations every 1.5 milliseconds, up to every 9 seconds. Millisecond pulsars are created when companions and binary systems allow neutron stars to pull in additional mass causing their angular momentum to increase. The record for millisecond pulsars is 716 rotations per second. When a neutron star exceeds three solar masses, they implode due to the overwhelming gravity that can't be countered by neutron degeneracy pressure. This implosion of matter into an infinitely dense and small space creates a black hole, sometimes referred to as a singularity. No matter or electromagnetic energy, including light, can escape from a black hole's gravitational pull. The event horizon is the location at the beginning of a black hole where matter seems to cease to exist because no light can escape. Matter entering a black hole actually does retain three properties, its mass, its angular momentum, and its electric charge. From a distance, time appears to slow down and eventually stop as matter enters a black hole. Matter is also redshifted and stretched very thin, ripping apart if not elastic enough, and eventually is converted into radio waves. Objects entering a black hole can't possibly survive their, their journey or escape because of the intense pressure and gravity. Astrophysicists are skeptical of the no notion of wormholes or connections to other universe through black holes because nothing could travel through one without being destroyed. Black holes have been organized into different types based on characteristics including momentum and mass. A short shield black hole was not formed by a body with a significant amount of angular momentum, so it is stationary without rotation. A Kerr black hole, however, has an ergosphere, or a region around the event horizon where matter spirals in. Three other types of black holes are named by their mass. Supermassive black holes can have millions or billions of solar masses. Intermediate mass black holes may have been formed from star clusters colliding, causing them to have a few hundred or few thousand solar masses. 
and primordial black holes may have been created during the formation of the universe early on. It can have masses of only a few grams or that of a planet. Special thanks to Dr. Neil Cummins and Dr. Peter Plavchan for their contributions to this video.